And we have just finished watching Impact's latest pay-per-view matches, Hardcore Justice 2021. Um, I'm joined, as always, by Dave from Crash Team Productions. How are you doing today, Dave? Doing all right. Thanks for having me. Ah, no problem. Um, KK416. Hello. How are you doing? Doing good. And joining me for the... Like the the first top... time in a year. Yes, Ben. Hello. Who who does not have a picture on screen because I haven't got one set up. But yes, um, let's discuss what happened on this show. We kicked off with the triple threat tag team match. Ace Austin and Madman Fulton versus TJB, TJP and Follabar and Josh Alexander with a returning P.T. Williams. Canadian. Oh, yes. One of the original members of Team Canada back in the day in, in TNA. Yep. And guess what? Team Canada won the match. Josh Alexander and Pete Williams picked up the victory. Called that? Yes, you did. But I called it midway through the match, so it's not as impressive. Mm. But uh, as the, the one that I made before the show even started. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that one. Uh, Dave, yes, what did we you... Will. What did you rate this match? I think I gave you a rating for this match. I can't remember. Oh, you didn't write it down this time? I don't think I did. I haven't got anything on here. I said 2.5 oh. out of 5. 2.5 for KK? 2.5, yeah. Dave, have you got one? No, I don't. I really don't. The, the the first match. I'll put you as NA then. Yeah, I kind of like. I don't remember any significant spots from it. it. It doesn't stick out to me. I'm sorry. That's okay. I gave supposed it to be a review, and I can't even remember it. Uh, ben, do you want to give you a rating before I get mine? Yeah, it was a two. Hmm. Not as impressed Ben was. I gave it a 2.75. I thought it was a solid opener. Nice to see P.D. Williams do a Cana uh, Canadian Destroyer. My favourite finisher of all time. This is a flip pile driver. How is that not impressive? Yep. Yeah, not a bad uh, thing. We then go to Charlie Legal. I love that pun. Plus it go plays off the word barely legal, which was what were, was... Um, ECW's first pay per view. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, Shearer faced off against Hernandez, with Shearer picking up the victory because Rahit Raju screwed over Hernandez. I didn't see that coming. No, I did not I'm either. So, I'm so out of the loop that I couldn't have seen that coming, even if I did see it coming. Mm. Yeah. It was, a, it was a good match. A few. I feel like Dave's throwing the word coming out a lot in this review. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dave, what did you give it out of five? That match, I say, I would, I'd give it a solid three. Huh? KK? I agree. I gave it a 2.5. And Ben? I'll give it a two. Yeah. Could have been a few more chair spots in my, my opinion, but it was it was a fairly average hardcore match. Yeah. Mm. We then go to a singles match. Doc Gallows taking on Black Tauros. This was a solid big man versus big man match. Yeah. Uh, Doc Gallows managed to pick up the victory. Full steam ahead for when they're going to hopefully reclaim their tag team titles from Finn Juice, April 23rd. Or 25th. Yes, 25th. 24th. I can't remember the date. Uh, but yes, uh, what do you think of that this match, everyone? If you're talking about the Saturday, it's the 24th. Oh, it's the 25th then, because I changed it to a Sunday because of UFC. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. What did you think of this match, Dave? Big man versus big man. Uh, sorry, what, what was the match again? Because we were talking about something. Doc Gallows versus Tor uh, Black Tauros. If I'm very honest, I, I kind of saw tonight why you guys say that uh, Anderson's the 
better singles competitor. Um, Gallo's kind of looked a little rigid and and stiff to me, like, and, and it's the same thing that I've been seeing him do on uh, on AEW for a little while now too. So, wasn't overly impressed with that match. Yeah, what did you give it? Two and a half. Huh. KK, what did you give it? Three and a half. Ooh, KK really enjoyed it. Uh, Ben? He's a boy club member. 2.25 right? for me. Hmm? Boy club gave... member, so I love his match. Yeah, I gave it 2.75. As a big man match goes, it was it was alright. We then go to a, un- a non-scheduled match. Matt Cardona versus Johnny Swinger in a Crate American Bass match. It was really not scheduled match. It was not scheduled. This match wasn't scheduled for the show. That's what I mean. No, that's, it was a one that was thrown in, so we didn't know about it. Yeah, Matt Cardona versus Johnny Swinger. And they had four crates on the wing post. If you opened it, you got to use whatever was inside of it. I mean, one there of them had a, a picture of Scott Hall for some reason. Eight by a, eight by ten picture of Scott Hall. Yeah, one of them was a mouse trap that made me laugh. The rat trap was funnier. That yeah. was a good spot. Yeah, good comedy spot. But the winning, the best box was the wrestling figure box that Matt Cardona used to win. Matt Cardona used yeah. it to win it. Why are you using them? No, it was a Sammy Callahan. No, he was, oh, it was Cardona. Oh, yeah. who God the damn it. Wrong, wrong no, match. It was Brian Myers' match where he used the wrestling figures. God damn it. Spoiler for later. Shit, I forgot that. Uh, Shoot your mouth. Yeah, Matt Cardona used the Always Ready, also known as Rough Rider. Yes, it's called Always Ready. Oh, is it? Matt Cardona won. What are you giving this match out of five, Dave? Uh. I don't know. I, I wasn't really feeling feeling this match. It, it like the. I mean, yeah, okay. The mouse trap was a decent spot, but but again, like for something that's supposed to be quote unquote hardcore, it was very soft. Hello. Out of yeah. five, again another two and a half. You underneath Tom. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I agree. So, what did you give so, it? Literally, there's. There's a, there's a house mm. to just straight over from Tom's with the bit that goes underneath. If you go around there, you'll see my car. Yeah. I gave it a four out of five. Oh. Damn, you really enjoyed this, KK. Did you follow the new blue line yeah. over him? Did you follow the new blue yeah. line over him? What did you narrate it, Dave? I drew, I drew, I, I sent a picture of the maps to you with a new, new Dave? line I drew for you. Yeah, so I'm just letting people finish finish speaking uh, so yeah just talking about we, no, we, need to, we need to talk over this oh okay he's on the phone okay yeah. i thought he was no, no. talking to us no, no, uh, no, no. i could have swore i just He's gave my rating on the uh, we're talking about the the loot crate match right yes yeah i, I said i wasn't like the, the mouse trap was probably one of the the only the like decent spots i gave it another two and a half Two and a half. I, I agree with you. Ben gave it 2.25, didn't you? All right. Ben has now got to step away um, from this review, so we will continue without Ben until he gets back. Uh, leave okay. the door unlocked and just come straight back in. Uh, we then go to an, another unscheduled match. Sammy Callahan versus Sam uh, Beal. Beal, yeah. The Terminator. I hate him already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you two think of this match? It was a squash. It wasn't really a match, was it? The only highlight I remember is like the exploder suplex on the floor Sammy gave to him. Yeah, and that was about the only thing I remembered. Yeah. So you two, what are you giving it out of five? Uh, 1.4. 1.5 it is. I agree with KK. That was a trash little squash match that didn't need to happen. I gave it a two. It if you're going to have a guy come out and issue an open cha- an open challenge, at least have that open challenge mean something. Especially if you're going to do it on a pre-taped pay-per-view. Mm. True. True. 
Yeah. Ben gave right. it and Ben didn't rate it. Yeah, I agree. All right. Well, we then get to the blind games match, which was a uh, blindfold match, which I expected. Yeah. Uh, Brian Myers took in, taking on Jake something, who picked up the victory. You uh, using the the wrestling figures in the crate figure. that Matt Cardona took after his match against Johnny Swinger. A box of action figures to the head. You, you know, you know the significance of the box of action figures, right? The, um, a few weeks back, Cardona had said to uh, Myers that uh, oh, something about him not having an action figure made of him yet. Uh, basically, they both have a, a channel, a YouTube channel together, and like they collect uh, action figures. They've been doing this since they were in WWE. Uh, oh, okay. About to confirm, Kurt Hawkins does have an action figure, by the way, because I actually have it. Yeah. But yeah, it was a good match. I gave it a three. Fairly entertaining little match, especially with the wrestling figures involved as well. I said 1.8. 1.2. Damn, you are harsh, KK. What did you give it, Tom? Three. I thought it was a good match. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go in between you guys with, again, another 2.5. Like, nothing really, like, popped for me. Yeah. And if it weren't for the wrestling figures, it would have got two and a half. But, I don't know, I'm a sucker for some wrestling figures. Yeah, Ben gave it 2.75. He enjoyed the match. We then go to the Knockouts Championship number one contender weapons match. Lister Edwards versus Havoc versus Jordan Gross versus Rosemary versus Daniel Dashwood versus Sue Young, not Susan. Yeah, uh, this the was undead drive. Yeah, this was a wild match, to be honest. I mean, well, we had a staple gun and freaking weapon the... spots everywhere. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rosemary uh, was planted. Uh into the uh, thumbtacks, I believe. Uh, yeah, she was. Yeah. Well, absolutely insane and match. Tennille Dashwood won, so she's now the new number one contender. There was even candlesticks. Yeah. I gave this a 3 out of 5. Uh, I gave it a 3.25 out of 5. Dave? I agree with you, Tom. Yeah, Ben gave it a three as well. Agreeing with KK. Yeah, we then go to Korea versus Title. Gianna Perazzo, Jazz, will Jazz defend her career and retain the right to wrestle? No, no, she won't. She lost. Nope. And Crazy Dave predicted that before he before the show even started. I just I wanted took one to look at it and said, well. Jazz is done. Yes, I knew it was, but I just I was hoping that she'd finally have one title run before she ends. You know? Yeah, uh, I gave this a 2.6. 2.5. Ben agreed with you. I gave it a 3 out of 5. I thought it was a fairly good uh, title defense for Diana Perazzo. Yeah. Uh, Dave, what are you giving it? Sorry, which match? I'm just scrolling you... through uh, Discord and distracting. Yona Proza versus Jazz. Well, I, I called the outcome long before the show even started, so again, not surprised by it. I don't recall there being any bi big spots. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like, there mm, wasn't any. No, not really. Yeah. yeah. It was a decent match. Hmm. Give it a three. There was three like a me. face buster, a flatliner. Mm. Pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, we then go to the final main event of the evening. But before we start that, Tommy Dreamer, the leader of Team Dream, uh, was discovered up. back at backstage and laid out. 
So yeah, he's going to have a mystery replacement. Uh, so yes, we'll figure out who that is later. So yeah, we have Violent by Design versus Team Dreamer in a hardcore war match. The rules are the exact same as war games. Every three minutes, There's new no competitor comes cage. in. No double ring. Yeah, no double ring, normal ring, but the rules are still the same. Every three minutes, someone comes in. Someone always has an advantage for half of the match. No pinfalls or submissions can happen until the, everyone is in the match. So, yes, we started off with, um, I believe it was Eddie Edwards and Cody Dina. Uh, then we got to Rich Swan, Joe Doring, Rhino, Willie Mack. I got to see William, uh, which Ron was on fire in this match. He really was, wasn't he? Yeah. The mystery replacement was Trey Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. The winner Joe was. Doring. Joe Doring is a one big man army. Yeah. Uh, who won? I forgot. Uh, violent by design. Eric oh, Young got the pin on Willie Mack. Thank you. No I problem. gave this match a four. Gave it a four and can't even remember how it ended. Well, I st we, we literally started this review immediately after. Leave me alone. <laughs> I know, I'm just busting your ball stop. Mm. What are you giving it, Dave? I, I gave it a four. It was the first match that I feel that... Uh, mm actually lived up to the, the hardcore title tonight. Yeah. Uh, KK, what are you giving it? You're going to be surprised by uh, my big Eric Young and the fact that he had a hockey stick with him. Like, <laughs> I gave this a 9.6 out of 10. So 4.5. Oh. Yeah, I was very oh, impressed. Damn. And Dave, uh, Ben gave it a 3.5. Uh, what are you guys rating it out of a 10 for the overall show. 7. Okay, Dave? Yeah, I agree with KK. I mean, it was a, the none of the matches were were super big matches, but it was a it was a decent show to watch. Yeah. I gave it a 6.5 and so did Ben. Uh I think if some of the earlier matches had been more impressive or we didn't have the squash match, it might have been a bit up a little bit, but overall it was a solid night of wrestling. Uh, the main yeah. event was fantastic. Women's matches, but both women's matches were really good. Just some of the matches kind of felt like they were there for the sake of it. Yeah, just fillers. Yeah, overall not too bad. That has been our review of um, Hardcore Justice 2021. We shall be back tonight on this channel reviewing WrestleMania Night One. Hopefully, if it doesn't piss it down with rain and have a thunderstorm. Regardless of the weather, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we shall catch you all later. Peace out, guys. Peace. Bye.